Hello everybody and welcome to your 49th chapter in your Java EE7 tutorial series. In the previous episode, we had covered how to secure web applications, while in this episode, we'll cover how to secure enterprise applications. So first of all, what we will be seeing is how to secure enterprise beans and a few examples of securing these enterprise beans. So first of all, securing enterprise beans. Enterprise beans are Java EE components that implement the EJB technology and are located in the EJB container, which provides underlying security necessities like transactions. Like web applications, enterprise beans can be secured using either declarative security or programmatic security. So to secure an enterprise bean using declarative security, it is very often that a person creating the enterprise be uh, application is not the person deploying the application. This can cause a huge problem if the developer doesn't understand the security of the enterprise application given to him by the developer. To overcome this hurdle, developers can send a security view. A security view is a collection of security roles, which are different types of users. These different roles have different levels of access to the application, making the life of the developer much easier as he or she can quickly figure out what has access to what. The following sections show how an application developer uses declarative security to either secure an application or to create a security view to pass along to the developer. So talking about that, let's specify authorized users by declaring security roles. The annotations we'll be seeing over here is first of all, declare roles, which tells the class what roles we'll be using. Roles allowed, which tells us what roles can use this method. And then there's the permit all, um, or, and the opposite is the deny all, which tells us that all the roles can use this method. Now let's secure an enterprise bean programmatically. Programmatic security should not be used frequently. If you can secure using the container or annotations, then you should do it. However, there may be times you need to access the security context information about the EJB's caller. There are two ways how you would programmatically set security roles. First way is the get caller principal method. In this example, the enterprise bean obtains the principal name of the current caller and uses it as a primary key to locate an employee record entity. So first of all, it gets the caller principal by calling the get caller principal, and then it uses the principal's name as a primary key to find the employee record. And then it uses that to update the phone number. Then there's the is caller in role. So the is caller in role method will be used pro programmatically to check if the caller is a certain role. If they aren't, then they will not be able to access the method they're calling, like in this example. Here, um, it makes sure that whenever the guy who's calling this method has the security role payroll. If not, then it will throw a security exception. Now let's take a look at declarative and programmatic security in action. First of all, our cart secure example. How to secure an enterprise bean with declarative security. All right, so go ahead and jump into your NetBeans and ensure that your Glassfish server has been turned on. Now all you got to do is go ahead and click open project and go into your security folder inside your examples, go into security and click on cart secure. Go ahead and open that project up. So this is a secure version of the previous cart example. All you got to do here now is go ahead and click on our cart secure and click build. Now what this will do is it will build up and package your application into a cart secure dot ear. Then after this is done building, you will see this guy pop up. So all you got to do is enter in the username, whatever you, the role that you created inside your Glassfish server and put in your password and click OK. And what this will do is it will allow you to build this entire thing through. Um, if you go ahead and open this guy up, you will find that if your um, if your login was successful, you will find this retrieving book title, removing and cut a book exception. So this is all what we need. And this is just telling you that this little Java applet that popped up is checking your um, security, like it's seeing if you are actually the person that you are saying you are. 
And now let's go ahead and check out our converter secure example, securing an enterprise bean with programmatic security. Back in your NetBeans, let's go ahead, close these guys up. So hold shift and click on, uh, let's go ahead and click and close these projects. Go ahead, go into your services and make sure that this guy has been undeployed. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and open a project and click on Converter Secure. Go ahead and open that project up. Now this example starts off with a very simple EJB application. It's converter and modifies the methods of the converter bean so that currency conversion will occur only when the requester is in the role of tutorial user. So uh, to show you all that, let's go ahead and build it. And once it's done building, let's go into our Google Chrome and put an HTTP slash local host 8080 slash converter, converter secure. And uh, for the first time that you get into this, you will have to go ahead and put in your authentication. There will be a little dialog box right over here and it will ask you to go ahead and put that in. Once you do that and you, you securely get into this, then you can go ahead, put in any dollar amount you want, submit it, and you have full access to your servlet. And that will be it for this tutorial, everybody. Now that you understand how to secure enterprise bean applications, let's go on to the next tutorial on Java EE security, the advanced topics. And I will see you there in the next video.